one take one. Hey, mama. <laughs> what? Hey. <laughs> Hello, you guys, and welcome to another episode of The Sip. I'm Rylantis Adams, of course, joined by... Elizabeth is Tomokist. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to our Halloween series of the podcast where this week I got to choose what we were wearing. <laughs> Do you regret everything? I regret most of it. I know your husband's kind of upset. Yeah. He didn't know you were going to be like a slutty schoolgirl. I didn't. Well, it's a devil, obviously. I'm yes. clearly a slutty devil. You're the devil. I'm the angel. Yeah. And not strategically picked, by the way. It just so It happened. just so happened that I gained 30 pounds and had to wear the larger costume. <laughs> I was like, there was a small in one and a medium in the other, and that's all they had. And she's like, perfect, I'm the medium. And I said, well, then you're the devil, mama. And it all, you know, it checks out. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty into it. I think my gloves are on the wrong hands, though. Do you feel sexier than ever? Um, I feel uh, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. All I wanted to do was, like, take a slutty picture with Lizzie. We're running late because today your plane was delayed by an hour. hour yeah. And you, when you do these day trips, there's just enough time for us to fit everything in. And yeah. right now we're, like, barely have an hour to record. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have shaved for you all. Yeah. I would have put on a little eye moment for yeah. everyone. I like the natural look, though. It's, like, I feel like it's a good influence for our audience. Like, you can be hot. With no makeup on. Yeah, but the beard is throw like do it, whatever it, it, you want. Is it fucked up that it doesn't throw me? I just I still think you look hot. I think for like my own like Instagram photos, yeah, I would like to be clean shaved. And this seems normal and fair, good to me. I I think we need to talk about the fact that both of us are wearing fake breastplates. Oh, why do we need to talk about that? Because I'm concerned that people are gonna think these are my real titties. I go, oh Lizzie, yours are so much bigger than mine, and she goes, no, I just have my real boobs underneath. Yeah. So these are not my titties. These uh, uh, these are these are fake titties like Ryland's titties. Mm. They just happen to match my skin tone. Lizzie's got her whip. I got a whip and a. Did you scare yourself? A little. <laughs> I saw I'm that. An angel. In... I'm not used to those. I saw sorts that of things. in your eyes. They got bright for a second when you cracked the whip. Mm. That's so funny. Mm. Yeah. So. We're just a couple of girls in our fake toddies. I mean, I'm a little bit concerned that I'm going to have to wear these titties through the airport because I literally have to jump right off this couch into an Uber. Mm. And what if I go through that scanner thing and they're like, miss, what the fuck? I'm like, listen, I think that is the best vlog footage you could think of. You know, I'm not going to vlog that. You I barely vlog. I can barely. <laughs> I can't even say vlog. But we have good news. What? Um, it is official. I mean, I don't know. See, the fact that you don't know makes me feel unloved. Well, I just have to make sure like Shane will give consent outside of your presence because you are like you're a big presence. Oh, so okay. it's like I don't know if he felt like, intimidated, intimidated, or my felt like he had to like. <laughs> what about me is you. intimidating? But Lizzie, since we have been thinking about the alpacas, has I mean you saw it on the podcast demanded, which a lot of people are still rubbed the wrong way. It's like giving them vibes of when you were all mad so, about the. But couch. here's the deal: if I was a man, none of you would be upset about me being demanding. Amen. So you can suck my nuts. Well, I don't and know. Name your alpacas Lizzie. I don't have any, none of my men friends demand. Who are your men things friends? in the way that you do. Who are your men friends? I mean, I have a few. Name names. Chris, Jared, oh, Shane, right. my dad, my brother. <laughs> your dad, I your mean, brother. <laughs> I was watching a movie on the airplane on the way here. Mr. Harrigan's phone or something like that. And, um, Mr. Harrigan gives this young boy a lesson. Don't ask for what you need. Demand what you want. And I was like, hell yeah. That's to the yeah, whole yeah, life. Yeah. Hell to the yeah. And I will say, it, I don't think it's boy, girl. I think it's Lizzie specific. Like you have a very right. um, but specific I, personality that I love about you. Well, You're not watch, afraid to ask for what you want. But sometimes I need to remind you, we don't demand, we ask. I demand that you name your alpaca, Lizzie. <laughs> I picked the one with the buck teeth and the screwed and up so face. And so here's the thing. Previously, Lizzie was choosing like the 10 out of 10 in the pack, like the, the look of the pack i'll just say it like, was i yeah ziva is the looker right but I, mis like, I mistook who ziva was if we went to... i thought ziva was the white one with brown spots not the brown one with white spots okay and i'm saying like we're not ta like we're not ha showing but no it's fine name your ugliest alpaca lizzie <laughs> <laughs> so lizzie was demanding that we name like the breadwinner if we were like going to competition the which we're not like no th that is the alpaca you would take to like yeah 
compete. That and that's the thing. Are there? Okay. Yes, we're not, you, no, we're not no. doing that. We're there maybe for nothing you but should. love. Um, and <laughs> maybe you should compete. And so I was not down for that. But then Shane was outside when we got home from lunch. When I was going to introduce the alpacas to Lizzie, and Lizzie yeah. was like, "I love this one." Yeah. And uh, I was like, "Oh, that's like." Our personality alpaca because she is the one that has You're like awful. these buck teeth. No, listen to me. She has these Our buck teeth. Personality it- <laughs> one. You are the most toxic alpaca mom I've ever met. And your tape is showing. I know. I'm it's, taking the tape um, off. It's better than nothing. So she does have like these very intense buck teeth. Like, but she also has like a beautiful kind of smoky eye. Oh, she's beautiful. And she has like the roundest eyes. I, I've gravitated towards her eyes and her ginger appeal. And she does like the very top of her her mane yeah. is the same color as Lizzie's mane. I love her. And Lizzie goes, this one could be Lizzie. And Shane goes, oh my God, I kind of like that for her. Cause and I was cause like, I'm the personality one. And we haven't named her yet. So yeah. I do think that tentatively that alpaca will be Lizzie. I'll always call her Lizzie. I just have to make sure like Shane's consensual outside of your presence as well. No matter what, I'm calling her Lizzie. <laughs> I'm fine with that one being Lizzie. I didn't have a name for her just yet. I wish that you were more than fine with it. No, I wish that you were I, ecstatic to name your alpaca, your personality, your hideous, your physically imagine hideous. Imagine me asking you to name your ne- ne- your next dog Ryland. Oh, I'll name my ugliest dog Ryland. <laughs> I will do that for you. <laughs> I'll name my personality dog Ryland. You chose the personality alpaca. I, love I didn't her. put that upon. I know, but I wasn't saying like, let's find the ugly one and name it Lizzie. <laughs> like that's not how it worked. And she's not ugly. She just has buck teeth. But and she's got is- buck teeth, and it's almost like someone broke her face at some point because it it grew in. Fajaggled. I love her more because of that. Like, yeah. I, I identify with her because I feel like, as a person, I kind of like this tooth has was always an insecurity of mine. Should we call her Relizzi? <laughs> Relizland? No, I like just Lizzie. I like oh. an homage to just you. You are my BFF. So like, I don't mind having an, alp- an alpaca named Lizzie. But yes, we've gotten the alpacas. I don't think the actual like journey of them coming home has aired on my vlog channel just yet. But it's a very fun process that has happened. And I just want to say like inside of this process, I don't know why I'm this girl, but I am like I've been to Murdoch's a hundred times, which yeah. is like the Walmart for the farm. Feed- oh, I thought it was the feed store. It is the feed store, right. but it's like the Walmart walmart it, you can get everything the walmart there. feed store you, yeah you, there's clothes for farmers there there's tractors there's supplies there's dog food, there's everything you could ever need if you have a farm and so i've been to murdoch's a hundred times but <laughs> not just in murdoch's pretty much everywhere i think i'm that girl that can do without a cart because I feel like me what? getting a cart is oh, like you're gonna so fill it official. Up? No, it's more so like my shopping experience. <laughs> Stop. Like I don't want, I don't want to feel like settled in. Like I don't want to commit to the store in that yeah. sort of way. I feel like if I have a cart, like I can't like maneuver out quickly if I'm like you feel trapped. Yes. And so like I never like committing to a cart, but I always get in the store and I'm like, then it's even more awkward. Like, cause I get the cart not to be awkward. Right. And then because I don't have the cart, I'm so awkward because I'm trying to hold like feed. Yeah, that's insane. And buckets and things. And then I end up getting a cart anyways. And I was just wondering if anybody else out there identifies with me. Like you go to Target I don't think so. and you get the handheld one. Well, but see, but I'm at holding... Target, it's not because someone's worried about being awkward. It's because they're worried about filling that cart up. Oh, see, I'm the opposite. That, that's it's me. Like, like I feel that way because if I grab a cart, it's like, all right, whatever I want is going in this cart. Uh, and I feel like I'm committing too much to like having my m- me in the store. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I get, I, I understand like what you're saying, but I don't bit. identify. <laughs> <laughs> like me personally, the devil does not identify but with But even that. if I go to like Trader Joe's, it's like, I can't ever commit to the cart unless I'm with somebody. I have to use the handheld one. Have you talked but to the your therapist handheld, about this? No, and that's what I really need to uncover is like, <laughs> why can't I commit to a cart if I'm alone? Yeah, what is that about? I don't know. Are you okay? I don't know. And it never has worked in my favor, ever. Like, ever because i'm never going to a store and just need what i can fit in one of those handheld yeah. things but i've never learned my lesson would it be shocking if i was losing feeling in my arms <laughs> <laughs> like am I sitting here feeling like a lot of oxygen is being cut off to the majority of my body right now <laughs> i feel tingly and weird deep breaths mama deep breaths <sighs> 
Um, and then on like another note of my alpaca is like, I couldn't keep like initially like the idea in my head, the fantasy of like keeping them a secret until I revealed no. it in the vlog was like, so there, it was like, so me. And then the second I got them, I was like <laughs> posting, like, I just, I had no self-control because I just love well, them so much. Well, you announced so them much. on the podcast before it was even official. I know, but the podcast is like, you guys deserve it. You're like, <laughs> you're diehards for us. You're our potience. Yeah. You're the potience. You deserve to know things before the rest of whoever. Anybody. Enjoys any of the rest of the world out. the yeah. trash of the world like i feel like you guys are very die hard you're an exclusive group yes you get everything first on the podcast yeah and so then when they finally did come home i never go into like my unrestricted messages but i was just like oh i want to see like what people are saying about yeah. the alpacas and i got this really nasty message just about like youtubers moving out of la and how it's become trendy to like get farm animals like jeffrey got yaks and now we're getting alpacas and we're the most irresponsible people in the world that don't deserve to have animals that are like this and i was like what first of all you know nothing about me or my situation. Like, yes, I post my life online, but I didn't like <laughs> this flippantly... isn't the poster that you want to be defending yourself in. Oh, I think it is. Oh, okay. I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just think like it wasn't like we moved out of California because we wanted a breath of fresh air. Like, and I think a lot of people that, that thought, I know you can't take me serious. It's just how good but, the hair is and how much uh, it's really, you. it's an expensive wig. Yeah. It's a really good one. <laughs> I went to Cherry Creek, which is the Beverly Hills of Denver. Stay focused on your soapbox. Finish your speech. It's beautiful. <laughs> and justice for all. <sighs> But no, I think like during the pandemic, like everyone, you reflect on what's going on in your life and LA, like I love LA. LA has a very special place in my heart, but it's not the most wholesome place to have relationships that are friends even. And, and as a couple of wholesome <clears throat> girls, I would just like to say Colorado is where women like us belong. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. But I just think like the evolution t of us getting to where we got alpacas was not like this irresponsible or weird or like trendy. Like we weren't like, oh, oh you didn't get alpacas YouTubers to be trendy. Are getting, uh, are getting farm animals. So we need to do that to like be relevant or something, which is what this person was insinuating. And I was like, they because they were like, they get this for the Instagram photos. And no. I was like, the Instagram photos... Yes, that's why you guys I are having a them. baby. Like, <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> but that's not why they got the alpacas. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. I, I mean, it's so ridiculous. I don't even know why I'm responding to this. Yeah. I was just like, how well, dare you? Well, it's making me think of something. How dare you? What? I found out the name of that YouTuber that has those blind French bulldogs. What? It's Joey Garcefa. 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 Joey, he has, he has four blind... French bulldog puppies right now and I thought that I would use our platform to make a plea to Joey to please God give me one of those blindies okay I'd love to rescue a French bulldog all right there's one named Jack Jack that can maybe see that can maybe see yeah and there's one named Leah Michelle which I think is so fucking funny <laughs> I would love to take one of those puppies on like contact me please <sighs> okay hmm Hmm. Sound off in Joey Garcia's comments below. Get me that fucking puppy. Um, did you like meeting the alpacas? I loved meeting the alpacas, and I liked the way that their lips felt on my hands. <laughs> Is that weird to say? <laughs> their big eyes are so beautiful. It, the, but I want them to just kiss me. Like I want, like I, I love to just hold my little dogs and let them like, because Bubs will hold my face like mm -hmm. this with a paw, and Icky now does the same thing. Like Icky will kiss me and hold my face, and I love it. I want to be able to hold those fucking alpacas, but I know for a fact if I was ever left alone here, you'd catch me out there just like covered in spit from having tried to like hold all of their little necks against their wills. I just want to cuddle. Mm -hmm. And I really think they should be free range chickens. I think you need to have all the doors open because when I was washing my hands earlier in the kitchen, I just had a vision of like an alpaca could just be here curiously. No, and I really want them to get to know their space that yeah. is their primary space, that is their safe space. So I think I'll have them like exclusively there for the first First week while yeah. we're really getting like used to each other because they are in a new environment but because our entire property is fenced in and alpacas don't challenge fencing they will as because like i'm also like slowly having like um positive interactions with the dogs and the alpacas like Cute. still through the fence yeah but like our other neighbors in the neighborhood their dogs coexist with the alpacas they're not like besties but no. they like coexist. They're, they're brothers and so i'm trying to get to that stage as well but i want to do it very slowly to make sure that it's like a nice a nice positive 
blending of families. Blending of families. I love. But we will, like, they won't just, like, the alpacas won't just be, like, free range yeah. the whole property all the time. But for, like, a few hours throughout the day, yeah. And then I'll, like, I would call like my girls to back. be their safe space. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that possible? Is that something we can arrange? <laughs> Oh, but I just love them so much. I'm grateful the, for the way it happened. The, the way that they look at you with their eyes, I've never felt so seen. And they're so, they're, they're, I can't get over the way their little mouths feel. They're just so soft. And they have like permanent smiles. Yeah. Their eyes are these big, beautiful eyes. And what I love so much is even though they're not like the cuddliest of animals, the second you like walk out through the barn, they come to you. Yeah. They like want to see you and interact with you. And it's just so like. Oh. They're a big stress relief. Like I do wish I could get all of them in one bed with me <laughs> and just like sit. It's a good escape from the rest of the world. Like I'd just like to like... sit on this couch and watch some shit with them. Mm -hmm. I love them. Well, that farm door back there, that w is like my dream to like that leave one? that farm door, the half of it open. Yeah. Where just their head can be popping I want them in like up in this house I mean never say dream. never never say never um so I don't know did you want to talk about like the way straight boys can't seem to dress themselves and I'm not a straight shamer like I'm not one of those gay guys that's like eh, to anything but gay yeah but like I have noticed that sometimes straight men struggle to find pants that fit them appropriately yeah and I I wonder what that's about like because it's more often than not it's the pants are way too tight way too and tight and it's like we're either getting like moose knuckle situations or butt cracks and mm -hmm. I want it's like you feel your butt crack out and like I feel a camel toe. You know what I mean? You got to feel a moose knuckle. If your balls are so sensitive that you like wince in agony, if I like so much as graze your testicle the wrong way, you feel your fucking moose knuckle and it's not cool, my guy. Well, I went through a phase where I liked skinny jeans, but... You never looked absurd in your skinny jeans. You weren't rocking like the 2006 like wet seal skinny jeans on men. But now I can't even imagine like I like a baggier jean that like hugs the butt a little bit, but yeah. is loose through the thighs and then tapers in at the ankle because I'm not like I can't do the TikTok trend that's the baggy baggy denim no but I don't know like we were walking today and we were just having some issues with some of the straight men out and about there was there were one too many like too tight pants like aggressively tight, aggressively tight and their butts like hitting you in the face because and then, it's so and, but it like uh, ugh, sorry I just burped and I got a whole well, girls cauliflower like moment butts, right like you girls, like a good I, butt. yeah like Joe's butt is everything and what kind of jeans do you have that man in chinos and is that by his choice or your choice? It was my choice originally. And then he bought a pair online to be like sexy for me. And he put them on. And he's like, oh, shit. And I was like, yeah, you can't wear those out without me. <laughs> but Joe's like also got a really nice little tushy situation. Like Joe's like hot. Like, hot. like Joe's got like a body. A body, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. Body, yaddy, yaddy, Yeah, like he's like a built strong man arm style, like shoulders for days. Like he has to shop at a different store because he's got such big bulky. Wow. Like he's got, he's like a stretch, like one of those stretch toys. Or He Man. I would liken my husband to He Man for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you watch that Heat Shulk or She Hulk show? I watched an episode. Me too. I watched one episode. I didn't hate it. I hated it. Really? Yeah. Wow. Hmm. 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 Um, and while we were at lunch, Lizzie escapes me. <laughs> she's like, I gotta go. I was like, okay. And she texts me from the bathroom <laughs> that she's watching wedding videos on full blast, blowing up the bathroom <laughs> well here's the thing if i'm shitting in public i'm definitely watching with something with high volume on my phone what's worse <laughs> like no because you know either way it's yeah. like if you hear the bodily sound horrifying for yeah the, for the person that's it's not for you. me it's for my disassociating it's not easy to shit in public so if i'm gonna shit in public i want to like disassociate it's did like you I'm, shit out there yeah of course i told you to fetch i the first text was fetch me my squatty potty and you didn't so it was a rough shit <laughs> That's the other thing that sucks about traveling all the time. It's like the toilet paper's trash oh, and I don't have my fucking my squatty potty. No, your toilet paper is fine. But it's like in public on an airplane in an airport, the toilet paper blows and ass. You shit in an airplane. Girl, I in shit a everywhere. Tube. I shit not. all over. You I shit my pants. Monster. I not. I can't help it. What do you want from me? You are the devil. I have a fucking gluten intolerance that I don't do facilitate. You? I just shit myself everywhere I go. I'm shitting. Hope you're eating. <laughs> it's been a while since we talked about shit on the show. Mm. 
You're welcome. You've completed your checklist for Halloween. You've got your spooky costume on and you realize, wait, I never got the candy for the trick-or-treaters. Well, who do you call? Nobody. Instead, download the DoorDash app and order from over a thousand local stores in your neighborhood to get all of the treats for your trick-or-treaters delivered. You can get your Halloween sweets, treats, and supplies all in one place delivered directly to your door with DoorDash. With DoorDash, you're not just getting the things you love, but you're also supporting the community you love too. From the stores to the restaurants and even the Dash driving around, each purchase provides a new opportunity for everyone involved because with DoorDash, there's a neighborhood of good in every order. I'm so excited that DoorDash continues to partner with us on this podcast because it's genuinely one of my most frequently used applications. I use it as a personal assistant to get anything and everything I need to my door. Just the other day, we were about to record the podcast. I realized I didn't have a memory card. I ordered it and right before we started filming, it showed up magically. For a limited time, our listeners can get 50% off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app and enter code SIP22. That's 50% off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code SIP22. Don't forget that's code SIP22 for 50% off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Today's podcast is sponsored by HelloFresh. And because I'm no chef whatsoever, I love that I can count on HelloFresh to deliver delicious tasting meals that I can accomplish myself. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh is now offering vegan recipes on the menu every week made without animal products of any kind like dairy, meat, eggs or honey. You can enjoy meals like sweet chili tofu bowls or spicy coconut curry stir fry. The best part about HelloFresh is it works with your ever-changing schedule. The plans are flexible and you can choose your meals for the week. You can update your preferences or change your delivery day all within the HelloFresh app. Everything is fully customizable and I love it so much because when my family comes over, I don't have to think about what I'm going to make them, but takes one more thing off my to-do list while providing something fun for us as a family to enjoy together. HelloFresh is offering all of you 65% off plus free shipping. You just go to hellofresh.com slash the sip 65 and use code the sip 65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Like I said, you can use the code SIP65 and use code the SIP65 for 65% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Well, I guess I can segue into my baby update. And That's then all I want to talk go. about. Well, yeah, because in the car, you're like, I'm very insensitive to your baby journey. Yes. And what do you mean by that? I just mean every time I like bring up babies and you're like, Ugh, don't bring up babies. I'm like, why I don't wouldn't do I bring that. babies? I think w- when we talked about the Kardashians, when there was like a hundred babies, I was like, oh, had a little baby envy, but I'm yeah. not like, I'm never like pressed or mad about it. Okay. Cause I was worried you were very sincere about it. And I was just like, oh, whatever. And I no. felt bad. Like, uh, yeah, it's not, I mean, but even like, I can't even say mine's harder than anyone else's because a lot of women have yeah. infertility struggles like, yeah. and have to do some of the same steps that even we're doing because they you know yeah so and i think like timing's everything when it's right it's right like we've had a few a few hiccups in the road like the first uh the first round of the egg retrieval wasn't successful like the and before we even got to trying like the donor had had her period through the birth control Mm -hmm. so like before we even got to the stage um but other than that, we did meet the donor. You have finally. to stop fondling your own titties while talking about this. I don't know why. <laughs> and we we like our egg donor had a breakthrough menstrual cycle. Hold on, <laughs> let me tuck my fake titties well, in. Well, I don't want to have a titty slip. You're gonna have a titty slip because you're ripping your titties out, Lizzie. Ryland, let me. <laughs> <laughs> you do kind of seem like a. Uh, like we seem like we're at the beginning of a porn. Absolutely. And it's a real fun porn because like I have the beard <laughs> and the boobs. You're like this sexy devil <laughs> school teacher. My shit's falling off. No, I'm not a teacher. I'm a, I'm like a dork. Don't age me. I'm like a young what? dork. No. You, did you realize that we are the age that most of our teachers were? Yeah, and I try to forget so that all the time. that's not aging you whatsoever. No, the other day I texted my best friend uh, and baby mama Haley, and I was like, dude, it's been 16 years since we were 16. Yikes. Yeah. Yikes. Yikes. Yeah, yikes. Yeah. Yikes. 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 Yeah. Yikes. You have to give up. Stop. They're not going to stay. Stop it. They're not going to stay. I know. Well, it doesn't matter. I didn't shave. So like yeah. everything's ruined. Everything's ruined. And I don't ruined. get my picture you know what? because Lizzie's perioded through her menstrual, <laughs> through, through her. Are you on birth control? Yeah. And you're perioding? Yeah. Is that you how get... that works? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> And 
your perioding. Oh, now she acts all, all knowledgeable I'm about not, women's I'm, reproductive I'm, it's rights. It's not like I know a fucking thing about my own hoo-ha, but at least I know it's not called perioding. <laughs> also, earlier when I asked you if your alpacas menstruate, you're like, I should find out. <laughs> well, yeah, they, I mean, one of them's a child. They like, because the previous owner of the alpacas... I think I already talked about it. There's a baby. Um, Do I look a little purple in the arms? Like, honestly, look at this arm. It looks a little purple, right? I need to get my grandma's oxygen reader over here for you. Like, honestly, I feel a little blue. You're lucky because your skin tone really matches the The toddies. Yeah. Yeah. Which I... It's disturbing, though. I'm not as blessed as you in that arena. I also have these crazy farm... Farm tans. tans. James also has a set of toddies that comes with a face. And it is perhaps the most disturbing thing you'll ever I see. I saw on Amazon you can get full bodies. Yeah. we So we have arms and we have face and we have, I don't know if we have legs, but I'll show you the face and you can put the asset up if you want to, but you're going to have to blur it. Mm-hmm. Um, Tell me more, mommy. Oh, where is it? You want to milk me after this? No. Mm. I don't think I could milk you, honey. Why? You don't produce milk. You don't know that. Mm-hmm. I do. You don't. Whoa. Yeah. Terrifying, huh? That is... Icky's trying to get him out of it. He's like, this is wrong. This is wrong. Who is that? That's James. Wow. Yeah. It's disturbing as fuck. Hmm. Here, I'll bleep. I'll blur the toddies so the audience can see. I don't know if it will be in focus, Elizabeth. I'm sure it is. Thank you for trying. You're welcome. So we met our donor. (gasps) What? Mm -hmm. Is that legal? What do you mean? Is it legal to meet your donor? Yeah. Why did you meet her? We wanted to get a sense of what our child was going to be like. Really? Yeah. Of Where course. did you meet her? Where did she I mean, live? We've met our no over Zoom. Okay. Um, I mean, we've met our surrogate over Zoom as well. You met your surrogate? Yeah, over Zoom. Why do I think people don't meet these people? I mean, a lot of so like the the egg donor. She's done this one other time, and she said the previous family asked no questions, didn't want to know anything. Wow. But Shane and I really feel as though like one day our child will be asking questions. Like we're not uh, we're not thinking like they're going to think forever they came from Shane and I together. You know, like they're going right. to find out how this works, and they're going to think, oh, I do have a mom somewhere. I thought we were going to tell them I'm their mother. <laughs> In my mind, we were going to tell them I'm there. I ask you to get you pregnant every day. <laughs> this is such a slap in the face that you now want to you want to disguise yourselves as their mother when you won't better them. <sighs> it's the way you're really Lizzie upset for me. did get really serious about my will today and asked who was going to take my children in case of an emergency. And I was like, why? Are you gunning for them? No, I'm happy to be the third place taker. The third place. Okay. Yeah. All right. The third installment. Okay. The third in Are line. you that for any of your other baby mamas? Lily's mine if anything happens to Haley and Aaron. And she's a really good one. She's a prize pig. <laughs> she's walking. <gasps> she's fucking walking. And she's like full-blown communicating. Does she say Ryland when she walks? No, thank God. <laughs> Lily, never say Ryland. Ryland. No. Ry Ry. Stop. This is Ry toxic. Ry. I know she's watching. <laughs> you know Lily? She- Lily Mama? Lily Mama? Say Lily say- May. She responds to Lily May. Lily May? Say Ry Ry. <laughs> Ry Ry. This is so not how I want her to know you. Actually, it's pretty safe. It's pretty, it's like this is exactly how you should be known. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like when you're in a, a wig mm. and a dress, you become gets- like a, yeah, she's a different woman. Oh my God. And we love her. Yeah, almost you don't you don't want to be around me in a wig, quite honestly. Uh, no, that's not true. You're very fun. Okay, thank you. It's like a liberated you. Mm. It's like me after a couple glasses of wine. It's like you after you smell wine. Ah. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> oh. Oh. What do you want to do? You. Me? Stop it. <laughs> I'm a married woman. Lizzie did almost like pull a finger in my butt when she was doing my corset. I did not. Yes, you did. I did not. You did. You were bending over like a little slut, and you were trying to, and pulling your skirt up. And I said, "You put that down." And you went. <laughs> I pulled my dick forward so it wasn't weird. It's all weird. All of this is weird. <laughs> Joe was like, "I didn't know you guys were doing slutty." I was like, "This was Ryland's idea. I made fish heads." I said, "Joe, don't fucking worry about it. Our audience <laughs> is women and gay guys." <laughs> If you're straight in the comment section, let me know. I'm actually curious if there's some of you. And are you gunning for Lizzie? Let's know if there's yeah. a threat to Joe. <laughs> there's no threat to Joe. Did we already talk about how upset you were when you discovered there were no, like, yeah, nobody hitting on you in your DMs? 
no nobody's hitting on me in the dms <laughs> and that's fine ever not everyone needs to be hit on in their dms some people need other things i don't think i'm getting hit on in my dms either so it's you fine. said someone said hey cutie in sna- on snapchat right that's a dm okay mm. whatever 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 mama should we transition into some advice though all right so today's advice though is starting with two am i the asshole submissions awesome so it's a little am i the asshole themed (laughs) they're a little bit longer so stay with us i think it will be worth it hi rylan and lizzie i hope you are well and chris and shane too if they're there i'm not sure if i attract crappy people in my life or if i'm the problem and i'm hoping you can help me i don't have any i don't have very many friends and i never have long story short none of my friendships last people either betray me or hurt me and i'm someone who can only take so much before i have to separate myself from the relationship fast forward to present day i'm friends with someone who i started a book podcast with during quarantine she has been pretty shitty to me throughout that time not allowing me to post on our shared instagram telling me uh what to wear for pictures to the point that she's criticizing my outfits and calling them cheap fast fashion Mm. she gets mad if i don't respond to her asap and picks apart all the little things i do i put up with a lot of it because the podcast was her idea so i let her be in charge also we have fun together and we've grown the podcast a lot so much so that publishers send us books to review for free but this past week i got sick with covid i didn't respond to her text for a couple of days because I was sleeping and she has since blown uh, blown up at me when I told her I might not be able to record the podcast this week because of how sick I am she showed no concern for my well-being and instead was furious that I didn't tell her sooner she threw such a temper tantrum over text that now I don't even want to do the podcast with her like ever this just kind of feels like the last straw how do you know when it's time to cut a toxic relationship off versus when uh you should keep fighting for it it I don't want to become known as someone who just cuts people off as soon as things get ugly, but I also don't want to waste my time and energy on a shitty person. Am I the problem? Do I just attract shitty people or do I need to stick things out longer? There's more to this particular story about why I think it's time to cut ties, but any advice you can give would be appreciated. Thanks for taking your time. You guys make me laugh and I love the podcast and both your vlog channels so much. I mean, I think you've given us enough evidence as is to justify cutting ties. I would uh evaluate sooner when you're meeting people i think as we get older it's harder to find friends that will treat you right Mm -hmm. especially if you've come to a place where you respect yourself enough to say goodbye to a relationship even if it's toxic so like good on you for knowing what's healthy and not healthy for you um but i deal with lizzie every day so like i get what you're just kidding i have to go um no, I mean, I, I, I agree with that. And I think a big part of if you've noticed a pattern of like shitty people coming into your life that you have to get rid of, then I wouldn't say that you are the problem. But I would say that there is something that you need to tweak in the way that you see and respect yourself so that you stop attracting people who come in and bombard you and take advantage of you. Yeah, I agree. And if you really look up front, people will tell you who they are. Yeah. They'll give you signs. They'll show it through their behavior. And I think you can only learn that as you get older because we all want to especially because it's so hard to make friends we want to think the best in people yeah we want to make friends and we want to have a good time and i think uh, a toxic person can really mask themselves with a lot of fun yeah throughout like weaving in things that make you go mm, they did that but i'll give yeah. them another chance because i do this all the fucking time like i'll notice something in a person that i'm like that kind of makes my stomach feel funny but maybe it's just me and it's like that's not me giving myself enough credit. It's like, no, Lizzie, your feelings are valid. And if you don't want to be around someone, you don't have to be around that person. Mm -hmm. And you also don't have to give them space to be awful to you. Like this happened, this happened to me like two weeks ago. I was like, yeah, remember I was texting you. We can't go into details about it specifically, but like I've been around this person where it's like every time I'm done being around them, I don't feel good. Like I Mm. actually feel bad. I feel like I've been picked on and I don't like it. And I think the first step, especially when you're in deeper with someone such as you are in a working relationship with this person who now you're having to do this with, uh, like if if this was just your friend, it would be a lot more simple. I do always think you should choose your headspace while also being honest with yourself. Because it's like, if this is a pattern and you are the common denominator, you do have to look yourself in the mirror. But if we're putting that aside, Mm -hmm. it's like you really do have to choose 
yourself. Yes. And this sucks if this means that your podcast that has now become successful has to go to the waistline. My advice would be to first try to have a very civilized conversation face to face with her because text messages, you can't always tell the tone. Things can go. And beyond it being about being able to tell the tone, you take back your power and you show yourself that it's okay to have your feelings and to voice your feelings and to make yourself a priority when you don't do the chicken thing of texting it. You have to do it for yourself to gain the strength and the momentum to do it like personally. And I think like you were saying, there could be some misunderstandings. Is there something wrong with your flight? No, I just wanted to check because okay. it vibrated and I got it. There could be some like misunderstandings on both ends that harbor resentment. Mm-hmm. And if you don't talk about things that bother you, yeah. it could like, if you really pissed me off, I never told you you pissed me off my resentment could come out in different forms for things that are completely irrelevant to the situation in which I'm mad. Mm -hmm. So maybe throughout this business with both of you, like you not being able to post on the Instagram or you not having access to maybe the analytics or something, and that's something you want. Maybe there's all of these things that you guys need to just lay it out on the table. And if you want to continue this podcast, you're going to have to start anew. You're going to have to start fresh and you're going to have to create boundaries and say like, this is exactly what I want. And this is exactly what I want. And we need to tell each other when we piss each other off. Like even, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going a lot. Just really quickly. Your nipple is hanging out now. Stop it. (laughs) Sorry, I had to tell you. And since we're just because we're already distracted, it's not waistline, it's wayside. Okay. Okay. And I feel like there something you said once like did kind of rub me the wrong way. It was a nothing. And I was like, I do have to tell you this because I don't want to hold a resentment. <laughs> no, I don't love him like the once. <laughs> he says once as if it's not daily. But I think it's very important. To, I agree with you. I think it's very important to communicate specifically because you're in a collaborative position. So even for yourself, before you walk from this relationship, give the relationship and yourself the opportunity to voice your concerns. And it doesn't have to be confrontation. It can be a dialogue. No. Yeah. No, I'm, uh, I'm agreeing. I was like, I'm oh, saying you like, want the confrontation? No, it doesn't have okay. to be a confrontation. Because I was going to say, someone hold my hair. <laughs> <laughs> but um, even if it's unrelated to the podcast, I think if you're going to have a business with somebody, you have it's a relationship yeah. such as a love, re- like an, a love relationship. Yeah. You have to have an open communication. You have to let each other know when you hurt each other's feelings. And you have to grow together instead of apart. So you need to work at it like you would your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Yeah. And also, I have to say, like... It's shocking to me how well this podcast has worked for us because generally I would not work with my friends. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. And I think it's because like if I do something a little weird, I tell you or, oh, I think it was even, I know exactly the scenario I was like anxious about telling you about, but then I did because I was like, you're coming to film a podcast this weekend. And if I don't oh, tell you, yeah. I'm going to actually like Wait, what was be it? resentful. It was something with uh, my brother who like helps you with finances. Oh yeah. And that it, was a it misunderstanding. Was a, it was, yeah. It was, and it was totally a misunderstanding and it wasn't necessarily your fault at all, but because I I felt I was like, well, I recommended Lizzie and it yeah, was, yeah, yeah. so I was like, my stomach was turning and I was like, if I don't tell her, I'm going to be like resentful and take like digs at her. So I think a lot of the digs coming your way yeah. could be resentments that are not related, but I think you need to have a sit down conversation, start anew and be honest with each other. If you ever want to have a shot at this podcast, if that doesn't work, you have to cut ties. Yeah. And I think not even about preserving the relationship, but about retraining your brain in the way that you handle all of your relationships starts with trying something different. And instead of just cutting ties and running, it's speaking unconfrontationally, unemotionally about what you want and need in a relationship without it being a problem to want and need things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And like, quite frankly, like, I don't think working with your friends works. Mm, yeah, it's very special circumstances. Yeah. All right, let's get to the next because we um, want to get through a lot. So I work in a pretty small office and I have one coworker that I and almost everyone else in the office just can't stand. She's at least 20 years older than me and I find her to be incredibly immature and annoying. If I'm being honest, she recently had a family member pass away and for the last few weeks, everyone in the office is going over the top to be overly nice to her and make excuses for her when her work isn't up to par. Since I would not consider her to be 
my friend, I have not been doing this because I think it would be disingenuous and I don't want to pretend to be someone's friend just because they're going through a hard time. I'm not mean or anything. I'm a cordial towards her. I just don't go out of my way to comfort her or ask her how she's doing constantly. I have also had family members pass while working here. My partner was actually... Uh, Jesus, my Uh, trigger warning, trigger warning. My partner was actually contemplating uh, suicide about a year ago while I was working there as well, which was one of the hardest things I've gone through. But I still showed up every day, did my work and didn't try to talk about it in the office constantly. Am I the asshole for not pretending to be her friend? Of course, I care that she lost someone close to her and I feel for her, but we all go through hard times. I'm interested to hear your feedback. I love you guys. Lizzie, you're on. Oh, my God, I'm an icon and I'm obsessed with every outfit you wear. Please start telling us where you buy your clothes clothes Hopefully honestly this one as well yeah mostly it's the gap in abercrombie but um i don't think she's an asshole i don't think you're the asshole either i do think it would be disingenuous for you to start a relationship because of a traumatic event in someone else's life yeah if it happened organically or you guys had a run-in i don't think it would be weird for you to say like i'm so sorry or if it's on a if, it, if you're included in a group email with mm-hmm. all of your coworkers that like your boss started, mm-hmm. I don't think it would be awful of you to just weigh in and be like, I'm so sorry. I hope you're doing or like wish your condolences. Yeah. But I do think going out of your way and trying to forge a fake relationship because something awful happened to somebody isn't something that you have to do in a workplace. I also don't think it's great for the person who's going through the loss. No, because then they have to, it's almost demanding of them as well yeah in a weird way yeah it, and it's something that drives me crazy is like the amount of times people ask like are you okay like no, no. i'm not like and uh, no and, and you know i'm not and is it fun to explain why you're not okay no. like everyone knows so yeah i didn't even think about it in that regard i think quite frankly like if a person is coming to work it's allowed to you're allowed to be very grace gracious to them someone going through like a major loss or like a life crisis yeah. like be be gracious be patient especially with her work not being up to par even if that's something you are having to pick up i think being understanding of that that's for a certain the, that's the of time. kindest thing you can do yes but i don't think because i personally like i've been through some things and it's like like i went to work the day like both days i lost somebody i went mm-hmm. to work and I would have not been able to like I welcomed the distraction because otherwise it's like I'm sitting in a very quiet space and my body's still in shock and I'm not like for me I'm talking for me I'm not ready to process something that quickly and, like I need a minute you know what I mean if you haven't had time to process yourself the last thing you want to do is talk to somebody you've never been close to at about work it. yeah like maybe if you have a bestie at work yeah like you if you're and you're and you need to talk about it with your bestie that's one thing but if if, if like Joe Blow at work is like hey I'm so sorry I heard about your massive loss do you want to talk about it? it's like not with you Joe Blow no we've Hard never pass. been friends and Hard it's pass. not yeah, yeah I do think the kindest thing you could do is if you're on her team and her not being as efficient at work means that you could help pick up a little bit of it would be the nicest gesture you could possibly do because it shows like yes we're not the best of friends but i am i am not above like helping you out in this trying time yeah and you don't have to do it forever it's just no no, like and yeah you're not an asshole not at all. And I'm sorry to hear about what you were going through too. Like that's that's really mm-hmm. hard. It's a lot to go through. I am in high school and I'm gay, but my mom wants to pay for my college. I'm really scared that when I come out to her after I have left, she's going to hold that over my head, but she won't let uh but she won't let me pay for it. I also can't come out to her now because of safety. I know that when I tell her it isn't going to be good because she's very Christian and Southern, which is not a good combo for the gays. Do you think I should come out before college and not let her pay or wait until I graduate and then come out and still not let her pay or just let her pay? Any thoughts uh, you have would be appreciated. Hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, she's your mother. And I feel like if she doesn't come around, that is a huge loss for her. I wouldn't hold on to something you know is who you innately are. I think the best... By hold on, you mean like stay closeted? Yes. Okay. So you're saying you would not stay closeted? I would personally not stay closeted. I came out at a little older of an age because it took me a little bit longer to like come around to like 
assuring myself that that's what in fact it was i mean i remember you wanted to come out when you had a boyfriend yes and, and that was a big part i kept of it. being like as soon as i have a boyfriend is when i'll tell my family because it's easy for me to just be like oh i'm in a relationship and this is who it's with yeah i thought in my mind i was like that's so much easier for me to like digest and have them digest i mean and, I and it's a little bit like just choosing to like tell your parents you're sexually active, which I also like for me, like I, I don't have that relationship with my parents. Like I'm not going to come home and be like, guys, I'm fucking, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's weird. But I do feel that there was this, uh, this whole thing that took over my life until it happened where I felt like I was lying to everyone around me. I felt like I couldn't unlock my potential. I felt like my personality is who I am. And I felt like I was hiding and like pushing down who I was. And I truly do feel like when I accepted myself for who I was, when I became comfortable in my skin and I didn't care what other people thought about it is when I became successful mm -hmm. it, because I allowed myself to be me and live authentically as who I am and I know it's not that easy for everyone like I think a part of me moved to Los Angeles because I I like I wanted to do everything I wanted to do but another allure there was like I didn't think anyone was going to get judged for anything because everyone was a melting pot of moving from everywhere to in pursuit of their dreams. Yeah. So I think that was a buffer that did help me. Like, I, I don't know if I was in Colorado when I came to full terms with it, if it would be so easy for me to do so. But I do think in doing so, you will find what your future will hold faster. Yeah, I also think that when you decide to diminish who you are or to to hide who you are for money, which would and money is your tuition in this scenario, you start training yourself in a really toxic pattern. And I understand that school is very expensive, but I I think that more than anything you, you cannot put a price tag on your emotional well-being. And what Ryland said about when he finally became himself, he became successful. When he finally came out to his family he, he and no longer had the burden of the anxiety of the quote-unquote lie that you felt like you were living mm -hmm. with, you blossomed professionally and personally. Yeah. And the same, I think, is true for myself. So not in a gay way, but in a, in a different way, in, in my alcoholic way, yeah. I hated myself so deeply that it felt like I was living a lie because I didn't want to be here right. and I never wanted to be here. And the second I was able to come to terms with that and accept myself and love myself, was I able to thrive personally and professionally as well? Right. So, um, and you know, for like a long time, you, you make it seem like, oh no, I'm okay with living this way because I can't afford to live another way. But that's, that's a lie. And when you're doing that, you're just keeping yourself from actually living. And I think the faster you tell your mom, the faster your relationship will be become repaired yeah. I feel like the sooner the better because like you're going to feel even more in myself like my mom knew I was gay but it was more so for me I felt the lie and the lie grew within me not her mm -hmm. so it's like and it, it wasn't necessarily a lie it was just like it was the time it took me yes. to come to terms yeah but that's how it felt internally so I think that's one thing. The other thing is really evaluate where you want to take your life. When I was in high school, I didn't understand the implications of the debt I was getting into or signing up for. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself what you want to do when you grow up and the best steps to get there. And maybe it's if you're college. worried about financials, maybe start and do your the general things, the general credits you have to do anyways at a community college that doesn't cost you everything all at once yeah. so like i wouldn't make money your end all be all because you're going to find a way and also uh but i do think that it's really important that we acknowledge the fact that uh it doesn't feel like a safe space for them to come out right now of course yeah and i think that that is a uh that is a valid thing that you really need to check in on like what uh, what is uh, what is a safe space for you to come out in? And if safety is a concern, a backup plan, or until you're old enough to leave the house yeah. and be on your own. Don't, yeah, don't put yourself in danger, but also really, really focus on the specificity of that word safe. What is not safe about it? Are you in physical danger? Are you in emotional danger? What is unsafe about it? Are you or are you just terrified of the response that you're going to get yeah. and and really weigh out what the reality is of that fear? Is this an anxiety bred I of was, your own insecurity or is it an anxiety bred of, 
you know, growing up in an, a in a physically and emotionally abusive environment. And I agree with you. I was going on the information we had. His concern is his mom is religious. Yeah. So there's that. But I felt like your um, punishment, may it be, would be financially based on what we got. But right. I agree with what you yeah. said. Oh, and I'm, I'm like, not even just for the specific inquiry, but for anybody listening who's right no, no, grappling no, with the same issue um know what that is because like also i didn't think it was safe for me to tell people i had relapsed before i got sober this last time and it's like when i hold on to that secret and i don't tell people because i'm like oh i'm gonna lose my job or i'm gonna lose this relationship or i'm gonna lose this person's trust if i tell them that i was on drugs or like had relapsed or whatever that's not true that's keeping myself in a sick in a sick cyclical potential possibilities there's the potential of consequence but the the grander consequence is is perpetuating a live omission and allowing and like and every time i did tell somebody oh i had relapsed it actually built trust because i was being honest and yes there's a very big fucking difference between coming out as gay in an in an in an unsafe space and telling someone that you relapsed on drugs but i'm talking about harboring secrets yes no i don't think that's invalid at all you're speaking to your experiences um but good luck to you and we wish you the best yeah good luck Life is like you've got your whole life ahead of you. That's exciting. And the sooner you can live it authentically, yeah. I mean, better. Mm. 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 <sighs> Sorry, guys, I'm losing a lot of oxygen peaking in high school. <laughs> I titled it that. Dude, honestly, like I wish you could feel what my arms feel like right now. Does my scar look like it's turning purple? Mm, a little. <laughs> I'm really telling you. Do you need to get like, out of your situation? I'm like honestly scared a little bit. These boob plates are really like <laughs> tight. Like Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, where'd my phone go? Oh, Oh. we have one more. Okay. What is it? Peaking in high school? Yeah. Hello, guys. Hello, hello. You talk a lot about self love, but I find that so hard. All I think about is what I looked like four years ago in high school. I was athletic and I didn't even worry about what I looked like. I am married now and I look in the mirror and I hate my body. My husband and family say I look uh, good and the same I did back then, but I don't see it. I used to always have to wear makeup and I stopped that and I felt good, but I'm back to that again. I just don't feel comfortable being myself. I worry about going to the gym, eating, what I wear, just everything. What is something you do to love yourself? I think we talk about it a lot on this podcast, yeah. which is like enacting habits that produce a healthier state of mind. Mm-hmm. I understand falling into a rut, especially I'm guessing it's not that physically drastic if everyone around you is saying, I don't think you look that different mm-hmm. or you've gained weight. But like, I understand to a degree, like I feel like recently as it's gotten cooler here, I like I've never been like, oh my gosh, I'm gaining weight. And I know I'm not like plus sized Mm -hmm. whatsoever, but I do feel like I've been eating more than ever. And like the bottom layer of my stomach has like gained a little bit of pudge. Mm -hmm. And I do keep being like, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? And I've never like ever thought about that sort of thing ever. Like it's not a struggle that I have had. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think it is just taking steps in your life that make you feel better, even if they're challenging. Mm -hmm. If it's going to the gym, even if you don't feel great because eventually it will make you feel better not only re- releasing endorphins but over time like physical results as well i also think that um something that i'm trying is i'm trying to remove my self-love and worth from my physical appearance mm-hmm. so it's like i what what uh what does happiness feel like to me like what makes me happy those fucking fried pickles make me mad happy mm-hmm. dude I'm going to eat the fried pickles like that. Hands down. I'm going to die one day and I don't want to have died missing one fucking fried pickle. And that has been kind of my mind state in like how I've been just eating and trying yeah. things and living and loving as well. But it can get you to a place where even if it's not physical, I think like over time eating like eating well those, does change. Right, And those pickles are also gluten free. Like it's like it's I'm not talking about doing heroin because it makes you happy and you're going to die one day. and You're going to want to do heroin. But I am saying value yourself differently Uh, your value is not determined by your weight on the scale your value is determined by your happiness and your kindness towards your fellow man and that's it and I think asking yourself what the deeper issue is like why are you in a place that you're constantly worrying about this anyway is like the day-to-day routine that you have right now unfulfilling do you want to make a change where you're doing something that may like you you were saying earlier like if something makes you happy go after what makes you happy go after 
for the feeling that makes you happy. Chase happy and go after it. Yeah. If you're not feeling fulfilled by your life, it you got it like... Honestly, it cannot be about what you look like. We're born with our bodies expiring. Your body is going to change. Your face is not going to look the same that it looked day after day after day. You have to start to love yourself for something more meaningful. Danielle Robey came on our podcast one time and she was talking about her body image issues. And she said that every time she starts to have like negative self-talk, she'll think about doing something that's good for her fellow man. And when she puts herself into a service position she's no longer thinking about herself in a physical mm-hmm. sense but she's thinking about making the world a better place and i think that's like a really beautiful thing you can do yeah. and i'm not talking about like you know going and building houses in a foreign country i'm talking about something as simple as saying something kind to somebody else reaching out to someone you know and saying hey i really love this about you and or like yo i was just thinking about this one time you exuded strength and, and i wanted to point that out like finding just things that. you're passionate about yeah finding things that light a fire under your ass because then you're more involved in that and how excited you are about whatever it is you're working on or like building up to that you have less time to like consume how you feel about how you look and i also feel like we're such assholes for talking about that like right now while we look this hot (laughs) wow in our fake titties do we keep going? No, you've got an airplane. I've got to catch. go. You've got an airplane to catch. <laughs> you've got to go. I did start thinking next episode is our hundredth episode. <gasps> Ow! And my God, I just together. broke my arm on your elbow. I'm sorry. That's you got to get me. this boob played off. I really do. <laughs> what if and I- you got to change before this Uber comes. I am. I am fearful of how uh, you might be treated in the airport looking that sick. And yeah, I mean, I got stopped in the TSA on the way here because my sweater was tucked into my pants, and it's like, what are these toddies gonna do? Mm. Mm. All right, you guys. Well, good night. No. Uh, good night I, and good luck. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching our podcast. We so appreciate it. Uh, happy Halloween. I, what? Happy Halloween. I mean, I don't even know if it's that week yet. It is. This is the week. This is Halloween week? No. I mean, Halloween's on a Monday, and this comes out, I think, on the 26th. So the last episode before Halloween. Yes. yes. And then after that, we're on our way to Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm. Mm. all right you guys uh if you want to follow us on social media we're at the sip official we're also on there personally lizzie has a vlog channel where she posts every tuesday i have a channel as well come hang out with us live laugh love and vlog Uh, (laughs) toxic as fuck (laughs) um all right you guys thank you so much we'll see you next week goodbye and And that's that's the the sip sip. (sighs) undo this corset okay bye right now (laughs) my arms are numb (laughs) 